Coming up on this week in Torrance, El Camino College Foundation awards $800,000 worth of scholarships. And the 58th Annual Armed Forces Day celebrations are turned with another big turnout. Then the U.S. Air Force Parachute Team makes a landing at a local school. And hundreds of volunteers come together for International Cleanup Day to beautify the city. These stories and much more just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Julie Chan. Thanks so much for joining us. Here are your top stories. Fallen Torrance police officers were remembered for making the ultimate sacrifice at the annual police memorial ceremony. The department's honor guard began the ceremony and Chief Mark Metsuda led the first remarks that honored four Torrance police officers and one crossing guard and their families. Former police officers, loved ones, and city officials came out to show support. The most recent police officer killed in the line of duty was Officer Thomas Keller in 1986. Sergeant William Robert Lewis, Officers David Noel Siebert, and Gary Elton Ripstein also lost their lives. The ceremony paid tribute to Hazel Kinney, a crossing guard struck by a motorist. The ceremony has a traditional service where flowers are placed near the memorial. It's very meaningful for me when I get to see the fallen officer's family each year. Uh, even though it's a solemn occasion, I look, really look forward to seeing them and hearing their stories about how their families are growing and uh, they connect with us knowing that we are always thinking about them. For Kurt Ripstein, he's been coming to this ceremony every year to remember his father, Officer Gary Elton Ripstein, who was killed in 1968. He travels from Utah with family as a moment to feel closer to him. It's extremely special for me and uh, uh, it's a you know, I was four years old when my father was killed, so I really didn't get a chance to know him. But uh, by coming here and experiencing this memorial, it makes a connection between me and my father. And I've brought my children, and uh, my uh, sisters have brought their children. The ceremony usually runs in conjunction with National Police Appreciation Week, but this year it was postponed so Torrance police officers could take part in the 2017 Police Unity Tour in Washington, D.C., where thousands of law enforcement members travel from New Jersey to D.C. on a bicycle. The Honor Guard detail also traveled for the Fallen Officers Memorial Service and other events. If you perform hands-on CPR during an emergency, well, there's a higher chance you can save a person's life. The Torrance City Council proclaimed June 1st through the 7th as Citizen CPR Week, which also coincides with the Torrance Fire Department's free hands-only CPR training in partnership with the American Heart Association. Hands-only CPR increases chances of survival during sudden cardiac arrest emergencies. You can find more information on Torrance Fire Department's Facebook page. They'll have training from June 1st through the 7th at various locations in Torrance. CPR can help keep the heart and brain going until emergency responders arrive. Representatives from local hospitals and McCormick Ambulance are also partnering with the city. Sudden cardiac arrest is the leading cause of death with over 350,000 cases in the United States annually. The city of Torrance teamed up with the We Love You Foundation for International Cleanup Day. We are so, so grateful that you've decided to help us in our city to make our city a better place. And you know, the work that was done previously and uh, is just unbelievable. What you move, uh, the, uh, the changes that you do to our parks and, and for our citizens and coming some, from so far away, it, it just shows truly just what your shirt says, we love you. Mayor Patrick Fury addressed about 500 volunteers from the International We Love You Foundation at the Madrona Marsh Preserve. The volunteers from all over came to Torrance for the 2017 Clean World Movement to cope with climate change. The volunteers were broken up into two groups. One cleaned up the Seaside Heroes Park on Anza Avenue. The other cleaned up the Madrona Marsh. At the same time, in more than 50 countries, We Love You Foundation volunteers participated in similar cleanups or other volunteer services like disaster relief, blood drives, and welfare campaigns. We're cleaning up. We're making sure that this is a, a, an area that is true to its native roots. All the plants that are California plants will be left here. Any others are trampled. We've established a good relationship uh, with the city of Torrance 
and um, the aspiration uh, behind the members is um, we want to take care of the, our global neighbors uh, with the love of a mother. Um, so we hope that we're able to deliver that love to um, our global neighbors in need. The foundation hopes to raise awareness about how to properly deal with climate change and leave the environment in better shape for the future. Local middle schoolers had the chance to watch a special landing on their campus. All eyes were to the sky as the United States Air Force Wings of the Blue Parachute Team hovered over Madrona Middle School getting ready to demonstrate what they're all about. They jumped out of the mighty C-130 Hercules flown from Reno, Nevada by the men of the 192nd Squadron. It was part of a trial run to prepare for the Armed Forces Day Parade. Team members demonstrated different formations like two canopies diving to the ground. And even though many of these members have quite a few jumps under their belt, they say this one was different. We rarely do it in an urban area like Torrance, California, so for us it was really unique. A little difficult to find the actual exit point from the air because of the urban sprawl of Los Angeles. Um, normally we're jumping into a stadium or something a little larger lit up at night. Uh, makes it a lot easier, but today, uh, beautiful California weather. We couldn't have asked for a greater venue and the school was just fantastic. We wanted to take the opportunity to jump into the school here today so that we could get an opportunity to just display who we are and what we do to the fine people here at uh, the middle school. The Wings of Blue participate in demonstrations and competitions around the country. They've been around for 59 years and run the Air Force basic free fall parachuting course known as Airmanship 490. Each year, the Wings of Blue conduct over 19,000 training jumps. They award over 700 jump wings to students who pass their program. Boy, those kids must love that. I know. What a great opportunity. Still ahead, thousands came out to Torrance for the annual three-day Armed Forces Day Parade and weekend celebrations. We have full coverage. Plus, the popular blogger stops by the Delamo Fashion Center to teach fans how to make something special. We'll take you there. The city of Torrance kicked off its Armed Forces Day tradition with a special performance by a renowned band from the honorary branch of the United States Air Force. <music> Tunes from the United States Air Force Band of the Golden West filled the James Armstrong Theater. The 60-member band travels around the country but is stationed at Travis Air Force Base in California. The Golden West is the only active duty Air Force band west of the Rockies and perform a wide range of music. They support 13 Air Force bases, 8 Air Force Reserve Wings, and 6 recruiting squadrons. Their mission is to inspire patriotism, foster a deep appreciation of the rich history and legacy of the Air Force, and lift the spirits of current airmen. The band dates back to 1941. It offers several performing groups from concerts, ceremonial marching band, jazz ensemble, Travis Brass Quintet, and much more. You can watch the full concert on Spectrum Cable Channel 22 and Channel 35 on Frontier. And thousands of people lined up along Torrance Boulevard to pay tribute to all five branches of the U.S. military for the annual parade. Veronica Cobos was at the parade and has that story. From one-of-a-kind warbirds flying overhead to United States Air Force Academy Wings of Blue parachute team making their special landing, the 58th annual Armed Forces Day celebrations were one for the books. 
As thousands of people filled the streets, all ages were excited to see what Torrance's longest standing tradition had in store. But for many out along the parade route, there was one special part they really looked forward to. The military firefighting trucks. Getting squirted by the fire trucks. And the fire truck. We're looking for the fire trucks to come by and squirt the crowd. <laughs> cool them down. But these military vehicles were part of nearly 90 features of this year's parade, which included entries from active and reserve military units from the five branches of the armed forces. The honorary branch this year was the United States Air Force. And while many came out to support their armed forces members and show their patriotism, for Vietnam veteran Steve Cooper, the Armed Forces Day celebration has been a tradition he's looked forward to every year. My fondest memory actually is myself and two other Vietnam vets that just came back in 1970 watching the motorcycle, the Torrance motorcycle uh, 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 ex exhibit. They lead the parade off every year and we saw their shiny new bikes and, and their, their boots all shined and we were commenting to the fact that, man, they better not stay in a line like that. But this year was extra special as Steve Cooper's stepfather, Al Erd, who served in Iwo Jima as an Army Corps tech sergeant and who flew 50 combat missions during World War II, took part in the parade. He will be riding in the parade today, so my sister was in the Torrance Youth Band and went to North Torrance High School, and she's up in Washington State now, so I'm going to take some pictures of her to send, send pictures of her dad up there. Plus, I'll probably go shake his hand, too. And as veterans from World War II were honored during the parade, also making their way down Torrance Boulevard were nearly 500 men and women who took an oath to enlist in the United States military. And as the colors of the American flag filled Torrance Boulevard, it was a moment of appreciation for the men and women who make sacrifices to protect our freedom. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Veronica Cobos. Thanks, Veronica. The parade has the distinction of being the nation's longest continuously running military parade sponsored by any city. And many spectators also put on their sneakers to take part in the Armed Forces Day 5K walk and run in honor of Torrance hometown legend Louis Zamperini. Reporter Jesse Pierre has the story. Over 900 participants gathered at the starting mark to walk or run 5K around beautiful Torrance to honor our troops. It is just um, a wonderful community event and it um, complements the parade and uh, the static display and everything that goes on in our community. And it, it's just a nice way for our residents and those living beyond our borders can get involved to say thank you. And thanks to the National Gopher Broke Education Center, runners got some inspiration before the start of the race with a tribute to two World War II veterans, Don Secchi of the 442nd Regiment Combat Team and Ralph Kinshira of the Military Intelligence Service. I just had the opportunity actually to meet one of the guys with the 442 group. Uh, Don Secchi is who I met and it's just such an honor to have them here and it's a really special part of the event. That's what it's really all about, kind of uh, just making sure that no one's ever forgotten for their sacrifices and uh, just keep the condition and the histories going and always making sure that we never forget. It's a real honor to be here. I, I appreciate the fact that I was asked to uh, accompany uh, Don Secchi here and any other uh, veterans that are left. The race started at the Del Amo Fashion Center on Madrona Avenue. Families came out in large numbers to support past and present military members, especially the Air Force, who is also the honored military for this year's events. The Air Force this year is the lead service, so we're trying to represent uh, in mass. Um, this morning we're going to be running as a formation, uh, representing uh, SMC and all the airmen in the local area. Runners ready! Go! We're here with our female winner of this 5K run. She made it right a little above 19 minutes, yeah. um, which was what you were trying to beat in the first place. Tell me how you feel about being here supporting our military um, and just being out here in Torrance today. It's a fabulous day today, beautiful day, and a lot of support from everybody. It's been really exciting, and uh, I'm just happy to be here, be with my team, Club Ed, and, and support all the armed forces and everyone out here, so thank you. And Omar Gonzalez was the first person to make it across that finish line. Both winners will get a chance to ride on a float in the parade as their grand prize. And with so much success, the sponsors hope to make this run an annual event. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Jesse Pierre. Thanks, Jesse. The Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce put on the event. This year marked the largest turnout yet. 
Also, as part of the tradition, people get an up-close and personal visit with many of the parade military vehicles and aircraft at the Delamo Fashion Center. Reporter Rhiannon Tritanich was there on opening day. Going inside a working military tank isn't something you can do every day. But during the weekend of the Armed Forces Day Parade, you can do just that. This is a chance for uh, the people of Torrance and Southern California to, to come out, uh, dig around in our military vehicles, uh, play around, see, you know, basically see what the military does. The exhibit was outside the Delamo Fashion Center and the different branches of the military were at the exhibit to show the public the vehicles they use. So we have the UH-60 Blackhawk. Uh, that is a person carrier. Visitors got a chance to get up close to military vehicles, including this one from World War II, as well as tanks from present day. Right now we're standing in front of an M1A1 Abrams tank. Um, it's the premier fighting force or premier vehicle for, for uh, troops in the Army. Visitors were able to go inside the vehicles and learn about them from the crew members who run each one. We'll show them around, talk to them. Uh, each vehicle has its own subject matter expert on them, so just not just one person knows everything. It's just we have crew members for everything. Members of the military were on hand to talk about the different branches, and the United States Marines even brought their canine unit out for a demonstration. We go use our dogs to apprehend people and uh, explosive detection, so we protect everybody else in the unit that we're, that we're working with. And the exhibit was not only a great experience for the visitors, but for members of the military as well. I think Torrance does a wonderful job of highlighting what the United States uh, military is and what we're about. Thanks, Rhiannon. Well, that looked like a great event out there. And not only were Armed Forces members honored during the celebration, so were their families at a private barbecue at a local park. Here's Jesse Pierre with the story. Soldiers got a chance to chow down on some burgers and hot dogs and take part in some friendly competition before marching in the parade. And Torrance resident and future soldier James Lee, who is following in his father's footsteps, is taking it all in. I've always been kind of patriotic. I think it's cool being a part of the military. And although it's only been a month since he's enlisted in the Army, Lee feels right at home. It's good to see team building. And there's a lot of like high spirits here. Everyone's loud. Uh, we're all part of a team. From pull-ups to relay races to the most anticipated tug-of-war challenge, Lieutenant Colonel Mark Ripley says he is preparing soldiers for the road ahead. For our future soldiers, we want to build a team, we want to establish camaraderie and esprit de corps, and we, building little mini competitions like this, like pull-ups, sit-ups, and all sorts of events like that, uh, it builds that. And you can see, when you look at the future soldiers out here today, they're cheering each other on, they're having a great time. So. Um, just to give them a little taste of what the Army's going to be like. We're a family in the Army, and competition always brings out the best of you. So it's a good team building, and then we get to go out and do um, part of a parade for the Torrance Armed Forces Day. So it's, it's just a great day to be in the Army. And with thousands of people attending Armed Forces Day events, Lee is happy to meet so many men and women in uniform. It's an honor to see well, all these high-ranking officers, all of my superiors. And we take the opportunity as a battalion to bring our future soldiers here um, to recognize them during the parade in front of the community, their family, and their friends. We think it's important to do that because the, they're the future of our Army and also the future of our nation. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Jesse Pierre. Thanks, Jesse, for that report. And the final celebration took place at the Torrance Marriott as military members dressed up for a private banquet. <laughs> With some live music, the night was underway. The military banquet is a chance to thank members of the armed forces, but also city staff and others who've helped to make it another successful year. During the banquet, fallen and missing military members were remembered with a moment of silence and special ceremony in honor of them. They get a chance to say thank you to the United States military for serving. This year was the United States Air Force, and uh, they're celebrating their 70th anniversary this year. The Grand Marshal was General Ellen Palakowski, who serves as the commander, Air Force Material Commander for the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. The honorary Grand Marshal was Anthony Dennison, an award-winning actor. After the Armed Forces Day festivities, the public also got a rare opportunity to meet two World War II veterans. These buzz bomb injuries were horrendous for the flying glass shards that were generated by buildings exploding. Dr. Mel Engelman and Mrs. Muriel Engelman took attendees through history at the Torrance Historical Society and Museum. Mrs. Engelman shared her experiences as a nurse behind the front lines of the Battle of the Bulge. 
The 96-year-old veteran was a staff member of the 16th General Hospital in Belgium from 1944 to 1945. She was awarded the European Theater Medal with three battle stars in the Belgian. For Roger, her husband of 67 years, Dr. Engelman served as a Marine in the Pacific Theater. Mrs. Engelman also signed her book, Mission Accomplished, Stop the Clock, which was published in December 2015. The book talks about her life and experiences on the front lines. Like the two and a half months that the hospital was ravaged by buzz bombs, each carry 2,000 pounds of explosives that fell every 12 to 15 minutes for 24 hours a day. And that's what they called the Liège area, Buzz Bomb Alley. And to a man, they all said they'd much rather be back at the fighting lines where it was comparatively quiet, at least some of the time. But despite all the buzz bombs, our hospital was going full blast 24 hours a day as we admitted and evacuated hundreds of patients a day under the triage system. Torrance Historical Society Museum is located at 1345 Post Avenue. Mother's Day may be over, but the Torrance South Bay YMCA celebrated the special bond in a fairy tale way. A magical mother-daughter tea party was put on at the YMCA in Torrance thanks to North High volunteers who helped out. Children and their mothers dressed the part with tutus and glittery wings for the special occasion. There was a beautiful picture wall, a fairy wand, craft making station, and healthy food. The Y is always trying to create programs where families can spend time together and build those relationships in order to come together as a community. You can follow Torn South Bay YMCA on Facebook to stay up to date on their events. A new restaurant is looking to call Torrance its new home and is one step closer. Stone Fire Grill was recently approved by the Planning Commission to have a conditional permit to allow the restaurant to serve beer and wine. Along with that, they were also approved by the city for their renovation design and it's currently being processed by the Building and Safety Division before construction begins. They plan to have interior and exterior renovations at their location in the Rolling Hills Plaza on Crenshaw Boulevard and Airport Drive. The renovation will create a rustic contemporary look showcasing their brand. City staff are currently reviewing the proposed design. Stonefire Grill offers a unique, fast, casual dining experience where customers can both dine in and take out. They use family recipes along with fresh ingredients. Torrance is one of three new locations they plan to open. They anticipate opening by November 2017. A Torrance company is closer to getting a treatment for sickle cell disease approved. Emmaus Life Sciences announced that their treatment to Andari was voted in favor by the Federal Drug Administration's Oncologic Drugs Advisory Committee. So far, there hasn't been a new treatment approved for patients with sickle cell disease in almost 20 years, and there are currently no approved treatments for pediatric patients. Andari can be used for adults and children. It's an oral pharmaceutical grade L glutamine daily maintenance treatment, and patients with sickle cell disease suffer from episodes of excruciating pain and have a shortened life expectancy. It affects 100,000 patients in the United States. If approved, Indari would be the first FDA-approved treatment for pediatric patients with this disease. The FDA has set a target action date by July 7th. Local DIYers, also known as do-it-yourselfers, receive some special training on how to build their own terrariums, hosted by a popular lifestyle blogger. Jenny Keller, who has a well-known blog called Jenny Cookies, stopped by the Delamo Fashion Center to teach people how to make their own terrarium using succulents. The event was a fundraiser for the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. During the workshop, crafters got a taste of sweet treats from Jenny's Cookies, bake shop located in Seattle. We brought down some of our famous sugar cookies and PB cracker cookies, Rice Krispie treats, in addition to hundreds of succulents for everybody to make their little succulent gardens inside these glass terrariums. The event was part of Simon Mall's More Than Pink movement. The company has pledged to donate one million each year in 2017 and 2018 to Susan G. Coleman and the fight against breast cancer. And one participant heard about the event on social media and was happy to hear it was close to home. I actually 
found out about it accidentally like on Wednesday night. I went on Instagram and I followed Jenny Cookies and I said, oh, Delamo, I can do that. For more information about Jenny Keller or to find out when she'll be visiting next, you can visit her blog, JennyCookies.com. And a popular sandwich spot now has a second location right here in Torrance. In honor of its big celebration, Jersey Mike's owners decided they would also kick off a fundraiser to help benefit the Torrance Education Foundation. Now, through June 4th, stop by at their newest location at 20016 Hawthorne Boulevard in the Torrance Promenade, just north of Delamo. Bring these coupons for a free sub sandwich with a purchase for each coupon redeemed. Jersey Mike's will donate $2 to the foundation. You can find the coupons on the Torrance Education Foundation Facebook page. They are hoping to raise $10,000. A local hospital received one of the highest ratings for patient experience in Los Angeles County. Torrance Memorial Medical Center earned a four-star rating from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Patients take a consumer assessment of the health care providers and systems. Torrance Memorial was one of only four hospitals in Los Angeles County that achieved this. No hospital received a five-star in Los Angeles County. This survey was measured by patients during their hospital experience who were discharged during July 2015 and June 2016. The rating places Torrance Memorial in the top 5% of hospitals in the county. The STAR rating was created in order to help people get information and compare hospitals quickly. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services update the STAR ratings quarterly. Hundreds of students received a lending can financially to continue their higher education at El Camino College. The El Camino College Foundation Scholarship Program has awarded more than $800,000 in scholarships to 650 El Camino College students for the 2016-2017 academic year. The program provides support to students in a variety of academic disciplines. Recipients are awarded based on academic achievement, financial need, leadership, and community service. That's to name a few. For more information about the El Camino College Foundation Scholarship Program, you can head to elcamino.edu slash foundation. And before we go, we have a sneak peek at what's happening on the sports desk with Byron Newsom. That's right. Byron, what do you have for us? Coming up on the sports desk, they have outscored their opponents 39-7 to during their five-game winning streak, but can South carry their winning play into the postseason. See what happens when Artesia visited the Spartans in round one action. Plus, I've always thought adults taught kids the right thing to do. Well, a group of West Torrance Little Leaguers are setting the example that we all should learn from. Tune into the Sports Desk at 4 and 9.30 p.m. right here on City Cape. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Byron. We love your energy. That does it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Julie Chan. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.